Friends, how are y'all doing? In this episode, I want to share with you the general expectations at a green card interview. Now, green card, you could also refer to as adjustment of status, of course. And if you want the free tips, check the video all the way to the end. See you soon. Friends, welcome to Green Card Guys TV. My name is John Ting. I'm your host. I practice immigration law in all 50 states of America and all across the world. I'm sharing these free tips with you and expectations because I know it can cause a lot of stress as you anticipate when your interview date will be or actually when you actually receive the interview notice. And by the time you receive the interview notice, it might be too late to prepare for your interview. So that's why I'm sharing this video with you. Now, friends, if you're new to our channel, Green Card Guys TV, probably don't know about this. We do offer free preliminary 15-minute consultation with anyone, but you have to share the secret code, and that we'll share with you at the end of the show. So please stay tuned all the way to the end. Of course, if you enjoy our content so far, please go ahead and smash the like button and hit the heart on Instagram. We greatly appreciate your support, and it doesn't cost you anything. Now, let's go to number one. You're going to go through security, right? But when you go through security, it may not be obvious to you, but don't bring in any weapons. And that can include those little pocket knives, okay? You don't want to bring that in, all right? If you bring your cell phone, that's not a weapon, but keep it on silent, okay? And of course, when you go through security, it is what I consider more strict than TSA at the airport. Even if you wear some steel toe boots, it will probably trigger through security. So you will need to wear, you can wear it, but take it off when you go through security. And of course, you need to bring your interview notice. You know, I've heard time and time again, people forget to bring the interview notice because they did, just didn't prepare it and put it with their package. So that's why I pretty much think of it as school. You need to bring in like a folder or a a large envelope, okay? So it can contain everything in there, including your notice, right? Because if you don't have your interview notice, it's essentially your golden ticket inside the building. So they won't let you in. They're not going to check for you. It's the security is usually subcontracted out. So they don't even actually work for USCIS, okay? Now, the other thing to know is the waiting time. They usually don't let you in more than 30 minutes before your anticipated or the scheduled interview time. So by the time you get in there, you're still going to have some waiting time because let's say your appointment's at 10 a.m. It may sound very early to you, but actually they've, I've had some scheduled interviews at 7.30 a.m. and even on Saturday. So please don't think it's 10 a.m. is a good time necessarily. I think honestly earlier the better because then your officer could is more likely going to be in a better mood and not clouded by all, the, all these other cases, and they have a clear mind. Because in my opinion, when they have a clear mind, they're not as distracted, and they're going to focus on your interview. Preferably, your interview would be less time. I think the less time, the better, because that means less questions, the better. And so what I share with my our clients is that, on average, I think it's a good interview when it's between 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Now, of course, it could take a little longer, but that doesn't mean it's bad per se, but that's just a general ta time frame, okay? Another tip is that if you go into the interview room and the officer says, look, we're going to have to separate you into two different rooms, even if it's interviewed by the same person, that is a red flag. I know some of y'all have called me and you seem nonchalant about it, like it's not a big deal. And you didn't review your in the notes after the interview, even after you did a FOIA, Freedom of Information Request. Yeah, it's a problem when they separate you into two different rooms. So I'm sharing with you tips so that you can avoid that situation, okay? Now, the second thing, okay, that you need to know when you're in the interview room is a swearing in. Essentially, the tip is you need to tell the truth. I know it may sound like common sense to some of y'all watching this, but believe me, we've had people call in and say, look, I did lie to USCIS or I misrepresented something. I don't think it's a big deal. Is there a way we can overcome it? It depends, right? A lot of people, unfortunately, we do have to reject their case because we don't believe it can meet the legal standard. So we really have a high standard filtering through our own internal process, and we hope to help you. 
By the way, if you uh, would like to access our free 15-minute consultation, you may have joined us in the middle of the video. Stay all the way to the end so you get access to the secret code. If you have that secret code, you can access the free 15 minutes with our legal team. So tell the truth is number two, right? It may seem obvious, but that's what you're going to expect when you go into the interview room. That's the very first thing. They'll want to see your IDs. They're going to ask for it. That includes your work permit, your passports, your birth certificate, of course, your driver license, if you were able to get one, and proof of citizenship. That really covers the gamut of all those different types of photo identification, really, because they want to make sure that you are the beneficiary or you're the petitioner. Kind of like when you're in school and, you know, you may have had a classmate, have someone else take their test. Well, essentially, that's what they're trying to prevent. They're trying to prevent fraud. They don't want someone else going into the interview room in your place. So I know it sounds silly, but there's processes that USCIS handles on purpose. It's intentional. Now, here's another tip. USCIS interviewing officers are going to act like your friend, okay? They're going to be friendly, especially starting out. They're going to be friendly. But the reason they're friendly, my friends, is because they're trying to elicit certain information from you, okay? So that goes into number three, and that is the questions. There's standard questions, sure, of course, like especially if there's a marriage case, they're going to ask you, how did you meet? How long were you dating? How long were you engaged? You know, and they're going to go into, oh, who are the witnesses at your wedding? Now, most people, at least 50% of our clients, for example, they didn't have the wedding, the big party, the wedding reception, especially, of course, during the pandemic. Very few people can travel in. And also, of course, because of expenses. There is no requirement to have a big party reception or anything. I know it because of social media, Facebook and Instagram, it may seem like you're supposed to have this certain type of uh, level of party per se, I guess you can say. But these officers can ask these kind of, kind of questions and it could get you flustered, right? It could make you feel a certain way. So please don't have that expectations, but you do need to have some kind of photo documentation. And no, they don't need more than like 10 photos. Usually I try to limit to 10 to 15 photos, okay? Don't bring a photo album. That's a huge tip right there because that is a red flag to them for them when all you have is photos, but you lack a lot of other evidence, which we'll cover in a separate video for you. Number four is the evidence itself, okay? So, of course, you have filed your forms and evidence together initially, probably at least 12 months ago when you filed the case, right? Or some people, they call our office and they say, look, John, the only evidence we sent, which the, was the marriage certificate in addition to the forms. Yeah, that's a problem. You need to get a lot more evidence, okay? And even if you think you did everything right in the beginning, when you filed your case, you need to provide updated evidence, recent evidence of bona fide marriage. Bona fide marriage essentially means is legitimate, is a genuine marriage. Look, I joke with my clients and I say, look, if you don't have any arguments in your in your marital life, that's really impressive. But in fact, I would think if you have arguments in your mar marriage, it's more legit. But how do you document that, right? So we focus on other types of evidence, okay? Financials, okay? It's a lot more than just a joint bank account. So we'll share more on that as a separate video. But again, hey, if you're just tuning in, we do offer free 15 minutes consultation. And to access that, you need to stay all the way to the end so you get the, the secret code that you need to share with our CARES team. Give us a call or text us if you're busy at work, 346-330-5888. All right. But I also want to share some traps. There are some traps to this, okay? And, you know, like I said earlier, they're trying to be your friend or, you know, they don't want to be your friend. You're just a case to them, honestly. And you don't care either way, either way. But they do have certain strategies to elicit information. So this is a big tip. It may sound strange, but don't talk too much. Okay. Answer the question directly. You know, if they ask, what is your date of birth? Give them your date of birth. Don't give a story about how you were born at a certain time of the day. They don't need to know all that. I know for some of you, it may seem obvious, but for some others, we do get these kind of questions and I can just sense that from certain clients with different personality types. I get it, but at the interview, keep it short. Okay, sweet and simple, all right? Try to do that. 
I highly recommend that. That's how you keep it within a time frame, 15 to 30 minute time frame. The other thing for you to know is you need to prepare for the interview before you receive the interview notice. Because usually by the time you receive the interview notice, you have likely less than 30 days to prepare for an interview. And what I mean by prepare for an interview is not just the documents. It's not just the evidence, okay? It's not just in terms of, you know, what kind of questions are they going to ask? Because by the time you try to gather the evidence, the evidence probably doesn't exist because you didn't proactively think about it beforehand six months to nine months ago. And honestly, that's one reason many people hire us is because in addition to providing checklists, we think outside the box. Every client, every marriage is different depending on circumstances. We have clients that live separately at the beginning of the marriage because of, for whichever reason, maybe because of income, their job requires them to be in a different city. You know, these days, I know a lot of people are able to work remotely, but many people are not, right? Essential workers have to be in the field, out there. They can't work from home. That's why they call essential workers, right? During the pandemic, especially. So we do think outside the box, And if you want to know more about the creative strategies we have, give us a call, text us, and our CARES team will contact you within 24 hours of a business day. Or you can click the link below, go to our website, greencardguys.com, and click on Contact Us. You can fill out the form there so we can understand your case better. And then the step number two is actually self-scheduling appointment if you want to do it that way. All right. So we do have a lot of tips that we just shared with you, but we have a lot more, believe it or not. So this is just preliminary basic expectations at the interview, green card marriage interview. And there's a lot more we got. So friends, if you want to know more information, stay tuned. And here is the secret code. All right. I wanted to share with you right here, the secret code, green card guys, you could have guessed it. But you need to stay all the way to the end. So we greatly appreciate y'all staying all the way to, to the end of the video. And if you have any questions for us, let us know in the comments. And of course, we're going to share with you, we're thinking about creating a video, an episode about red flags, more of those. So if you're interested in that, please comment below. Just type in red flags and we'll know that more people are looking for that. And we'll create that video for you as soon as possible. Now, friends, until next time, please Continue wearing your mask and we wish you the best.